I got killed by a scab. You know what's worse than getting capped by a rat in Tarkov? Getting capped by a rat at 30 FPS. But don't worry guys, today we're gonna be fine tuning your settings so Tarkov feels buttery smooth even in the thick of a firefight. So grab your rig, buckle up, and let's optimize Escape from Tarkov 0.15. Trust me, your rig will thank you. And if you don't have an X3D, you should get one. Alright, let's start things off with something simple but essential. Windows updates. Yeah, I know they tend to pop up at the most inconvenient times, kind of like a player scav after you've cleared the area for an airdrop. I don't know. But trust me, keeping Windows updated is more than just getting rid of those annoying pop-ups. Microsoft frequently pushes performance improvements and bug fixes that can really help your games run smoother. You can easily check for updates by hitting the start key on your keyboard and just start typing Windows Update. Click the check for updates button and if there are any updates available, download and install them. After that, restart if necessary. After you've restarted, go back and check for updates again. Sometimes there's a sneaky second wave of updates waiting. Once you see the magical you're up to date message, congratulations, you've just completed step one. And for those of you fortunate enough to be running an X3D chip, make sure you've installed update package KB5041587. This one contains an X3D specific patch that can seriously boost performance. I saw about a 10% increase in Tarkov after installing it, so it's definitely worth your time. Next up, BIOS updates. Now, I get it. BIOS updates sound intimidating, like you're about to hack into the matrix or something. But honestly, it's not as scary as it seems, and it can be a total game changer for your system's performance. Think of it like getting a firmware update for your rig's brain. Trust me, you don't want your PC running on outdated instructions. To start, head over to your motherboard manufacturer's website, find your specific board, and grab the latest BIOS update. You'll usually find it under support or downloads. Then, follow the instructions they provide, each board can be slightly different. Save the file to a USB and get ready to flash that BIOS. Flashing your BIOS is like your system's version of a memory wipe. It's perfectly safe if you follow the steps and don't lose power in the middle of it. Just take it slow, double check everything, and before you know it, your PC could be running smoother and faster. You can check out the short video I made walking you through a BIOS update on a Gigabyte board here. Okay, now that you've got your BIOS updated, let's move on to configuration. There are two key things you'll want to adjust for optimal performance. There are plenty of advanced settings you could tweak, but honestly, they tend to offer minimal gains unless you're really into fine tuning and have the experience to back it up. So let's stick to the basics here that make a real difference. First up, overclocking your memory or RAM. For most of you, this is as simple as enabling the XMP, DOCP, or Expo profile in your BIOS. BIOS. These profiles are preset by the manufacturer to match your memory kit, so it's basically plug and play. Easy, right? But if you're running an AM4 CPU, there's one more step. Make sure your F clock, M clock, and U clock are all set to the same speed. That's your ideal setup. For AM5 users, you'll usually want to set your F clock to around 2000. That's a pretty safe setting. If you have good silicon, you can go higher, but 2000 is a good setting to start at. And with AM5, the F clock can be independent from the M clock and U clock, but make sure your M clock equals your U clock for best results. Next, you want to enable resizable bar. This allows your CPU to access your GPU's memory more efficiently, which means more frames in game for the most part. And who doesn't want that, right? Now, for those of you running AMD CPUs, here's a little bonus. Consider using a negative undervolt using AMD's PBO or Precision Boost Overdrive. This is where you adjust your CPU's power settings to give you better efficiency and performance. Setting a negative curve lowers voltage under load, giving you cooler temps without sacrificing performance. This works for both vanilla and X3D chips, and most motherboards with PBO tuning will have a similar menu as I'm showing you here. Just follow the steps and boom, cooler, faster, better. If you want more in-depth videos, make sure you check out these videos on the screen right now. I have a video for the 5000s and the 7000s here. Next up, let's tackle a few app settings that can squeeze out a little extra performance. Look, in a game like Tarkov, every frame counts, right? Every single one. So even small improvements can make a difference. First on the list is Google Chrome. If you're like me and leave Chrome open in the background while gaming, you might be surprised how much of your system's resources it can eat up. One quick fix is to head into Chrome's advanced settings and disable hardware acceleration. This helps reduce the graphical load on your GPU while you're in game. Next up is Discord. Most of us will have Discord running 24-7, but like Chrome, it can hog more 
more resources than you'd think on default settings. To lighten the load, go into Discord settings and turn off hardware acceleration. While you're there, you might also want to disable the in-game overlay. It's handy, but it can mess with your FPS more than you realize. Moving on, we're going to look at a Windows setting that's very often overlooked. It's called Enhanced Pointer Precision. It's enabled by default and it sounds like a good thing, right? But what it really does is apply a sensitivity algorithm to your mouse movement depending on the speed of the cursor, and it makes it harder to build muscle memory and land your shots accurately. To fix this, just head into your mouse settings and make sure it's disabled. Your aim will feel a lot more consistent once it's gone. Next up, we need to make sure your GPU drivers are up to date. This is one of the easiest ways to boost your system's performance without changing any hardware. Open up either NVIDIA GeForce Experience or the NVIDIA app if you're using that, or AMD Adrenaline software if you're on an AMD GPU. Then check for the latest driver updates, install, and I would always recommend doing a clean install. If you suspect you have driver issues, then you can always use DDU to do a full reset and clean install. As usual, I have another video covering that. If you're interested in a quick walkthrough, go ahead and click the link in the upper right hand corner in the video description or at the end of the video. I have a video covering the NVIDIA control panel and the settings I use to get optimal performance. If you're interested in seeing that, there's a link in the upper right hand corner, also a link in the video description and at the end of the video as well. I've also included a link to a PC build video where I covered the AMD Adrenaline control panel. While you're at it, let's not forget about chipset drivers. These control how your CPU communicates with the rest of your system and outdated drivers can hold back your performance. Head to your motherboard support page, look up your model and download the latest chipset drivers. It's a small step, but it can make a big difference in how efficiently your system runs. So that covers all the steps I take outside the game itself. Now let's dive into the in-game settings. First off, I always keep the use physical cores option on. Honestly, on modern CPUs, I haven't noticed a difference whether this is enabled or not, but I still keep it on just in case. It's not gonna hurt your performance, so why not? For the in-game graphics, I've set up a few custom presets. I've named them Pure 50, Pure 60, Pure 70, and Pure 80. These roughly match the different GPU tiers. For example, when I'm running in RTX 3060, 4060, or 6600 XT, RX 7600, I'm using the Pure 60 preset. With the 3070, 6700 XT, something like that, I'm rocking the Pure 70 preset, and so on. If you're lucky enough to have a 90 level card like the 4090 or the 7900 XTX, you've got enough horsepower to max out pretty much anything and still not hit a GPU bottleneck. Although sometimes with Tarkov settings, you can still kind of lose performance with those cards. But anyways, these presets should give you a good baseline to work with. Oh yeah, and the Pure 50 preset is for any cards like GT. GTX 1650 or GTX 1060, anything that's kind of older and underpowered for today's standards, you can use the Pure 50 preset. Now, these settings aren't one size fits all. Everyone's rigs and preferences are different, so think of these as a solid starting point. Feel free to tweak from here depending on your preferences. Usually for 60 level cards, I stick to 1080p, but if you want to bump up to 1440, DLSS or FSR will help you keep those frames steady with the same preset. For 70 and 80 tier cards, there's enough power to comfortably run Tarkov in 1440p, so you can push the settings a little higher. If you're curious about how I came up with these presets, I've got a full settings guide video where I break down every single setting, what it does, how it impacts performance, and what kind of visual difference it makes. You can find a link to that video in the upper right hand corner in the video description or at the end of this video. And there it is folks, that's the full breakdown of how I squeeze every last frame out of my hardware for Tarkov. Hopefully it helps you too. If you've stuck around this long, congratulations. You've officially graduated from fighting your rig to just fighting bushes and dark shadows and corners, and the occasional actual player. Now, if you try out these settings and see a bump in performance, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment. I'd love to hear about it. And if you're feeling proud of that new silky smooth frame rate, join the Purology Discord and show it off. We're just shy of a thousand members now. Everyone's chill, knowledgeable, and there's always someone around to answer questions or just talk shop. I'm always available and down to chat as well. My username is Puri. I'd love to see you there. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. Until next time, good luck on your raids and I'll catch you in the next one.